I am here not alone tonight, but with a special guest, Huga, our own <laughs> chess world own songwriter, artist. Um, and tonight we're gonna have a special uh, stream dedicated uh, to women's chess players, to women's chess champions, to... Uh, well, generally, uh, I believe all female chess players who are fighting in this chess world. Huga, hello! You are streaming from Chile, so good afternoon, probably. How are you today? I'm very happy, Alexandra. Hello, everyone. I'm in Santiago de Chile. It's very, very hot weather here. And uh, I'm so glad to be streaming with you, Alexandra because i'm very happy with our collaboration our creative collaboration that we will tell you about that's an amazing actually concept that you came up with uh, uh, a series of songs dedicated to women's chess players can you tell us a little bit uh, uh, where did this idea come from uh, why did you decide to make uh, not just one song but a special series of the songs and what um, what uh, have you done uh, so far this idea called Chess Divas. It's a project. It's a musical audiovisual project because it's uh, not only songs, but videos that support each other, right? Uh, because the, the lyrics are about chess, the music is about chess, but also what is shown in the videos is a tribute to all the women chess champions and legends throughout history. Uh, I'm just starting with this project. Okay. I hope that in the end of January, the first six videos that I already recorded, six songs with six videos. Each one has a video. And I hope that I can release all of them the last days of January or the first days of February. So now we are going to speak about it for the first time with Chess Queen. Yeah, and with I'm you. very excited. I'm very excited about it. And uh, it's an experiment that I wanted to do just to be able to honor all the women. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Everything's well. Can you hear me? Yes. All the women players that have, um, sometimes we don't even know their names. We don't even know their chess games. And that's what I want to visualize. I want to help to, to bring together art and chess once more but now to tribute all these champions that open the doors to all the women nowadays the things are much more easier for us not completely easy but nowadays it's a possibility to go your own way and and dedicate yourself to chess but in the 30s in the 40s in the 50s i think that these women are heroes so i'm really inspired by them i have a vera Menchik magnet in my fridge <laughs> all the time and I said, okay, Vera, I am going to make a tribute to you and all the chess women chess champions in history the best as I can. And I did it in a very different way that I have done my other videos before. Okay, I know that you prepared a special. Hello? Yes, I know that you prepared uh, a special file uh, with slides uh, uh, telling us more about how the uh, footage uh, went uh, and uh, what uh, diagrams you used for. Uh, I mean, chess positions you used for your songs. Uh, can you guide us through this uh, file? Can you tell us page by page? I prepared also chess positions so we can uh, look at them at the diagram, I mean at the uh, board and analyze a little bit, but uh, but yes, if we start with uh, your first page. You will be showing the slides? Yes, I will be showing the slides. You can say like page one and I'll uh, open up this page for our spectators, but I also prepared uh, okay. positions Let on the board. Open, open mm -hmm. it to them. One yes. second, one second. Please. Okay, yes, Just you can. Open it. Um, so the the first song is called uh, Palia Chornie. Okay. You have to tell a little bit about the song because Alexandra changed all the lyrics. This is the most famous Russian song of all times. Everybody knows this melody. It has been translated even to 
to English, to uh, French. I have listened to it in so many languages. It's su such a beautiful melody, you know? But we said uh, with Alexandra to change the lyrics in Russian, still in Russian, but to make so uh, lyrics about chess, a chess story, to tell a chess story with this beautiful melody. And with this beautiful song, I chose to make a tribute only to Vera Menchik. Why? Because she was the first women chess champion in the world of the world and um so this song is a tribute for her yes 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 indeed it's a very uh, famous uh, russian song uh, a very old one and uh, it was first published as a poem in uh, 1843 um, and then uh, it was um, uh, transformed to uh, well the way um to a song uh, and actually uh, there are it's not 100 percent clear who was to, uh, who was the first composer of uh, the melody but the most renowned and played version that we're used to hearing uh, according actually to wikipedia i'm not sure it's true but it's written by dalgis of ferraris and published in Russia in 1910 and yes it's true that there are many many um, variations of the songs in different languages uh, uh, but and actually it was your idea to try to adapt this song to um, uh, to chess lyrics and um, I was skeptical at first about it but uh, I must say after listening to to the song it turned out pretty well I like it very much how it turned out uh, but uh, of course it's up to the uh, our spectators to decide at the end uh, but uh, I hope uh, that um, people will like this adapted chess version and um, it's a very nice of course tribute to the first uh, women's uh, world chess champion uh, Vera Menchik. Yes, in this position that we see, it was a uh, black turn to move. Uh, it's Max Elves' uh, turn to move. I think he moved. Uh, king he played H5. King H4. He just uh, played ah, King H4. Yes. yes. And uh, Vera took on E5. And uh -huh. then yes. and, and then played Knight D3. And. Uh, um, Max Uwe resigned actually uh, it's uh, very interesting because uh, probably after this victory I'm not sure about uh, which victory but uh, the so-called Vera Menchik chess club was created uh, and meaning that ladies female chess players who win against uh, um, overall world champions get into this club so if we look for i think uh, on the web for vera menchik club probably we will see some um, definition of uh, this club because vera uh, played against uh, uh, not only female players but against uh, top men players uh, such as max Uwe, as we see and Sarah ulka pablanka um, and um, well, she, she unfortunately she died uh, during the Second World uh, uh, War in London um, in 1944, and she was 38 mm -hmm. by that time, so quite young. Yes, very young actually. Mm -hmm. Very young. Very young. And, um, yes, the, this this, uh, this position that I that I selected with Max Elbe. Uh, I didn't select it because it was so beautiful, but because she beat uh, Max Weber, that was okay, uh, a world uh, top champion, no? Mm -hmm. So um, the other the other positions that I selected in general of the different women that were world chess champions, women world chess champions, are mainly because the position the the games are very beautiful. Or because uh, also the the opponent is really strong, you know that that is the criteria mainly based on the on the tactical beauty of the position and the and the strength of the opponent. That was so to say the, the criteria. I had the help of uh, Bradley Law, that is a, ma a chess master from Singapore, and also from my dear friend uh, Ruben Felgaet, grandmaster from Argentina. He also helped me with the 
with the chess selection. And some of the games I also for the Polka Sister song that is coming afterwards, because first we will talk about the Russian songs, but, uh, the collaborations with Alexandra. And then I will tell you about the Polka Sisters song tribute that is in Hungary. It's my first time, guys, singing in, in Russian or in Hungarian. I cannot oh, wow. speak Russian or <laughs> but I did, did my best. Uh, but you said and, uh, uh, you said it's going to be six songs, right? Of the series, six or songs. and uh, so yes. two of them are in Russian, one in Hungarian. Two of them are in Russian. Mm -hmm. One is the Polya Chornie, right? And the other one is called, uh, the original is called the Scala Laska. Yes. And you, you, uh, you uh, adapted it before. The, the first one that was adapted of all of them was that one that uh, we transformed into Shachmatiska. Right. The, the beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. And that one is a tribute. Uh, I made a tribute for the 18 women that have been world chess champions. So okay. I show position of all of them during mm -hmm. that song. Then there is the Polgar Sisters song that is in Hungarian. Mm -hmm. And those games were selected by the one and only Susan Polgar. Mm -hmm. So I asked her to, to tell me which position from her and from Sofia and from Judith she thinks it would be better to show in the song. She really liked the project. She told me, okay, I, I support, I look, I look forward to see it. And I think these positions would be nice to show. Okay. So uh, that would be very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, to show you afterwards and the other three songs are three tangos in spanish you know my native language is spanish i am from chile mm -hmm. but i used to live many years in argentina in buenos aires and i used to go out dancing a lot <laughs> and sing a lot until very late at night <laughs> okay okay <laughs> and i learned many many tangos and i usually sing them also with a piano player Mm -hmm. So I changed all those uh, songs, the three beautiful tangos. One of one of them is very, two of them are, are quite famous. The other one, not so much, but they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics I transformed to tell the story of uh, uh, three different games from Judith Polgar. Okay. Yes. So uh, we will talk about that in a little afterwards. I made Por Una Cabeza. Mm -hmm. That beautiful game um, by uh, Judith Polgar against Gary Kasparov, in which she got a draw, a very nice draw. She saved the game, but then it was rook and knight against rook, and she forgot the technique to make a draw, and she lost. And it's a very tragic song, Por Una Cabeza, you know, Por Una Cabeza. She, well, yeah, she oh, got the drawing no, position. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so that, uh, that story is told with that tango. And I want to say a special mention uh, because uh, Gary Kasparov's mother, Clara, uh, uh, passed away today. And I think that she was a very important woman in her career. All of, all of uh, he, he himself, he supported himself a lot in that. And I want to make a special mention since today is all about women in chess. It's not on, only about the chess players, it's also about the mothers, the trainers, Wives. the teachers, the supporters, the family that are behind the chess players, all the strong women that are there for the chess players, making possible that these champions come true. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, let's start uh, amazing project. So you said um, uh, two songs in Russian, one Hungarian, then uh, tangos in Spanish, right? Uh, what else? You're preparing something else, right? And some other languages? Yes, yes, uh, that's the second stage of chess divas okay i'm um in process i don't want to say so much because okay. i don't like to say it's a secret or yeah, they are ready spoil it. we won't spoil it's it secret, but other chess champions uh, yes yes uh, well in english in french in german there are many beautiful songs coming for the next uh, stage of chess divas but this first stage is in russian hungarian and spanish all of it will have a uh, in English subtitles so that everybody will understand the beautiful lyrics because it's all about the stories behind. Okay. And now we will we can have a look to some images, some uh, exclusive footage of the of the shooting of the films and yes. also uh, to the lyrics. Okay, let's and start. The, let's start uh, with again, the first um, with the first song, right? Which is Ochi Chorne, and it's dedicated, as we said, as we mentioned, to Vera Menchik, the first women's world chess champion. And you said that you chose three position 
uh, from the ver uh, various games. Uh, the first one we um, already mentioned is against uh, Max Oeve. And now I have another game of her against um, um, George Thomas. And she is playing white. She was playing white in this position. And uh, she crushed, crushed Black's position with a very nice... Um, nowadays quite typical we should say sacrifice but at that time probably it was not that typical and nevertheless knight <laughs> to f5 is a very nice um, sacrifice on the f5 square and if black accepts the sacrifice then um, black's king will be checkmated there is no way to protect from all these checkmating threats uh, in the game black took with the knight but uh, we can see that the king is left all alone. All the most of the black uh, pieces are on the queen side, too far away from the king side. And Vera ended the game with a very nice uh, checkmating attack. Black is too late, too late, and then queen sacrifice. Very nice queen sacrifice. Black resigned because after king takes h7, rook h1 will follow with a checkmate. So one nice combination. Oops. Uga, are you here? Are you here? You with us? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sometimes uh, the audio is a little bit tricky. But yes, I am here. Good, I am watching yes, the, because sometimes what you're doing with the Twitch uh, <laughs> icon. Okay. And the, and the Actually, chatboard. well, uh, yeah, because sometimes video just freezes of you. So if you want, you can. Uh, if that happens, you can um, switch off the uh, stop. I mean, Twitch, um, because it takes some extra uh, internet power, maybe. Okay, but so far it's good. So that's the second. what about now? Yeah, yeah, it's working now. Everything is working now. Yes. So that's the second combination of Vera Menchik. And then the third one. Yes, another very nice queen sacrifice in this game. Vera played with black. And uh, she played queen f4. Very nice tactical um, blow. Queen takes f4. And it turns out that after king takes f4, bishop e5. And the king will be checkmated even though it's in the center of the board but checkmates happen all over the chess boards and um, well in the game king f2 was played but then after knight e5 black resigned um, Uga you with us yes here you can hear me this one is very nice yes this one is very nice it's um nice um yes yes i can hear you nice uh, queen sacrifice um can you tell us more how the um, uh, video footage went where did you film uh those uh songs yes the um, the videos were shot in two different locations First, we shot all the piano and the, the live performance of the songs at a very, very spectacular place called the Parigi Udvar, mm -hmm. the, the Paris Café. Mm -hmm. That is a, a very important building in Budapest because I've been living in Budapest for the last two years, mainly there. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's, <laughs> that, that you're showing those pictures are in the studio. That, that was the other location that we had a white and a black background, but that's the Paris Udvar, yes, that spectacular ceiling, a very beautiful building, and it has a beautiful piano, a, a really good piano, and uh, a, a very good acoustic. So that we, uh, we decided to make um, two of the videos there. We made the Pagliacorni and the um, and the Hein Jatek Volnik. That's the Hungarian song for mm -hmm. the for the Polgar sisters. Yes. Those two are filmed completely in the in that location. Okay. And the other ones were mainly shot in the studio with the piano also shot in the in that location. That's very beautiful. So 
you will see a very special aesthetic, so to say, a very special style in the videos. Good. Okay, looking I had forward. A great, team, uh, a, a great Hungarian team was supporting me and working with me, so I'm very happy. Good. And now viewers who are just um, joining us asking, is it the Huga who wrote and sang O Capablanca? <laughs> is it you? Is it really you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> a very special guest am i saying actually this song capablanca i liked it so much it was like um i had a very difficult uh finish at the end of the chess olympiad in batumi we lost our match the russian team and uh oh no we didn't lose we made the draw but uh the, if we would won with uh if we would uh win this match would win the goal um what uh bronze medals i believe and since we made the draw it was not enough for medals and it was very we were very upset but then we heard your song and it oh. cheered me up a little bit yes this song okay well it was a big uh, surprise for me and a pleasure to see your tweet because uh, you said in your tweet that it had made the, the end of the Olympiad very nice for you to listen to the song and that you were very happy about it and very excited. And for me, it was a really a honor because I hadn't ever talked to you and uh, or had contact with you and to see that you were supporting my song, it was really, really great. But yeah, I well, saw you that, once, I think the first time we met was in Gibraltar. You visited yes, the tournament, yes, the yes, open yes, tournament, yes. and um, yes, well, we true. didn't really have time to talk there, <laughs> but uh, I yeah. think that the first time I um, saw you, <laughs> and then okay anyway we showed the combinations that you are showing uh when uh, in the song uh, uh do we yes. want uh, to uh, listen to it yes yes maybe people should should say if they want to listen to it i i like to listen to it <laughs> i like <laughs> okay okay guys do you want to listen to Ochi Chorne? it's uh, well Ochi Chorne is the original name of the song right it's originally called Ochi Chorne, but we changed it to uh, Palia Chorne, which uh, um, means uh, black squares dark squares um, and uh, well Anna is here Anna Rudolph is here and she says that she cannot wait to see the song <laughs> yes Anna is listening to us thank you Anna hello dear Anna yes <laughs> oh nice you change your background so uh yes I try to adapt yes, because I want to change the, a little bit <laughs> yeah I see <laughs> dear Anna dear Anna is my, is my dear friend and I'm very very happy well the first time time that I made the experiment of changing uh, lyrics of a famous song, because, you know, usually I make, I invent, I compose the lyrics and the music of my own songs completely original, like O Capablanca, Isolated Phone, or Tactical. All these songs are, are my songs. But then when we were with Ana Rudolf in Chile in the summer, some years ago, we were in holidays and we just went to the World Chess Championship in London to see the Carlsen Caruana match. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the, the song of uh, Camila Cabello, Havana Onana, was very famous. And, uh, yes, I then know. We, my, uh, daughter, uh, my daughter sang it all the time, all the time, and even did some school projects on this Havana with, uh, I remember, with US states. She was putting all the states using this song. So, yeah, <laughs> I know this one. I liked it very much. It was so funny and we were having so much fun and we changed the song to Caruana Onana. Yes. You can watch Actually, it on YouTube. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to send the link out. now. I'm going to send the link to this uh, Caruana na, na, na <laughs> song so uh, spectators can uh, listen to it uh, after uh, our stream. Sí. Yes. Alguien pregunta si soy chilena. Sí, soy chilena. Jugues chilena. I am from Chile. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, that was the song Caruana that I'm sending you the uh, link to, and we're going to listen to this um, to the version of um, 
adapted chess version to of Ochi Chorne, which is called now <laughs> now uh, Palia Chorne, Black Squares. And uh, let me, which slide should I? Guys, I want to just say once more, but it's my first time. It's my first time singing in Russian. It's my first time. I cannot speak Russian. I can say like Spasiba. Spakonya noche, harasho, that's all, okay? So <laughs> and now, now this songs. was a really big challenge to sing. <laughs> and now two songs about chess. <laughs> so just have mercy, okay? Yes, I, uh, well, okay. So now it's like um, the first time uh, we can say it's a uh, premiere um, uh, of Palia Chorne. And I'm gonna start it now. Uh, let me and so i'll put it uh, so you can hear and the spectators can hear let me try it i need to do it okay here we go Palia Chorni. Palia Billy. Honey, be my smile. Как люблю я вас, как на вас, и как верню вас в этот звездный час. Палья черные, палья слабые, и мои от меня мечты славные, где я жертвую, где коней сдаю, где бессмертную создаю свою, увлеклась я сря, мане слауда, но зевнула холд, промежуточный, и цыгнут я на доске пожар. Быстрее, кони смелее, по доске летят, мочу милые. Как люблю я вас, как молюсь на вас. Верю, чай же в роковой мой час, кони быстрее. Well, I believe that was it. impressions we're waiting for your impressions probably uh, it's a little bit difficult to still understand uh, uh, the story behind it right because there is a story behind it we show well I show the slide with all the um, uh, words uh, like Russian words written uh, in English letters but still it's not a, really a translation and I think um, the story behind it uh, also um, is quite nice. Well, I hope so, <laughs> at least the adaption of it, uh, because um, normally it's a tragical song uh, of a man who falls deeply in love with his dark eyes and uh, he cannot live, he cannot, I mean, exist, uh, but think about those uh, dark eyes. And um, since it was um, adaption the story is a little bit different and i hope one day when you hear the translation uh, of the story you're gonna like it as well yes can you hear me 
can you tell a little bit the uh, I know the, the the translation the words but it would be nice that you say like in few words what what's the song about well actually uh, I, I open up uh, the slide now Palia Chorne, and I can translate <laughs> yeah I can translate it so uh, but uh, I mean word by words right Palia Chorne, Palia Bele, meaning uh, dark, black squares white squares Кони быстрые, мои смелые, мои brave, uh, uh, fast nights. Uh, как люблю я вас, как молюсь на вас. Oh, I love you so much, oh, I pray for you. И как верю в вас в этот звездный час. And I believe you, and I believe in you in this uh, uh, star hour. Поля черные, поля слабые. Dark squares, weak squares. И манят меня мечты славные. And uh, my dreams are uh, carrying me away. Uh, где я жертвую, где коней сдаю. To the point where I am sacrificing my nights away. Где бессмертную создаю свою. Where I create my uh, evergreen game. Увлеклась зря, нанесла удар. Oh, that's a pity that uh, I was carried away by my dreams. Но зевнула ход промежуточный. Since I uh, missed uh, an intermediate move. В цветноте я на доске пожар. I'm in time trouble. There is a fire on the board. Семь ходов еще на минуточку. And there are still seven moves to make uh, in one minute. Кони быстрые, кони смелые. Uh, my brave nights, my uh, courage, uh, my fast nights. По доске летят очумелые, flying all over the board. Как люблю я вас, как молюсь на вас, how I, oh, I love you so much, I pray for you. Выручайте же в роковой мой час. Uh, save me in this uh, dark hour. Кони быстрые, кони смелые. My uh, fast nights, my brave nights. Уберечь, увы, не сумела я. Uh, alas, I wasn't able to save you. Но прошел контроль ходы сыграны, but uh, time uh, trouble is, uh, uh, is passed. Is f- and uh, ходы сыграны, all the moves have been played. Uh, на доске возник эндшпиль выигранный. And there is a winning endgame on the board. <laughs> so, <Woo>! here it is. <laughs> yes, so, something like this. Something so it's like a this. good, it's a, it's a happy ending of these uh, sad stories of the, of the, of the nervous, the, 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 um, the anguish that you feel that uh, you're not going to uh, go past the time control and uh, that you missed uh, an amazing opportunity and you're praying that you find the, the right move in time and then it's a big relief because you find a beautiful uh, opportunity in the in the end game so it has a very very happy ending like we like in the in the chess board when we are playing a tournament right that we suffer a lot but then sometimes it's it's like heaven opens yeah after time <laughs> trouble when it happens when we happen to have uh, to end up with a winning end game it's definitely a relief <laughs> Yes, especially after like fierce sacrifices and uh, uh, attacks that you cannot really control of. Uh, yes. So, yes, that's the song. And so that's the first song. Mm-hmm, the first song. And now we get going to the second one. Yes. To the second one, which is called, again, it's called Shachmatistka. But the original name of the song is Kalalaska, and it's a, it's a song that uh, was uh, composed and uh, written by a very famous uh, Soviet uh, songwriter, singer, poet and actor, Vladimir Vysotsky. Actually, this song was sung for the first time in, uh, Russian, in the Soviet movie. Um, vertical and it's uh, about uh, about alpinists and uh, this is about a climbing climbing woman that she she wants to get to the top but she climbs mountains right and then you thought because we were we were thinking with Alexandra which song in Russian I was telling her I, I would like that we could make like a classic song before we we thought about the auditorium many months ago it was like in the middle of the year 
And I told her, what do you think that we make a collaboration, a, a song, but in Russian? I, I, I would like very much that it's a very beautiful Russian song, uh, but a classical song. And uh, which song? And we were thinking, and she, you were sending me, and I was sending you ideas, and we were thinking, and then this song appeared, this uh, Skalalaska song. And you said, instead of the Skalalaska of the climbing girl, it should be the chess player girl. And uh, you started telling me your ideas, and it started flowing very fast for you. And it was, I loved it. It was brilliant. And I was very happy with it. And I was starting to, to, to learn it because this is a very long song, Alexander. Yeah, and it's very it. difficult to pronounce, <laughs> I believe, in Russian. Oh my God, uh, I was going crazy with this song, but now I know it by heart. This is amazing. I cannot believe I listened, you know, I was listening to Alexandra's recording on WhatsApp with the lyrics, you know, because I needed to know how you pronounce the lyrics in the time, you know, in the in the right melody. And Alexandra sent it recorded to me. And I was listening to Alexandra's recording like I don't know. I listened like five hundred times easy. easy. Uh. <laughs> no, I know it perfectly. <laughs> Yes. Well, actually, that's the song. It's uh, normally, I mean, originally, it's a man who is singing the song of uh, um, Scala Alaska, which is yeah, a climbing woman, an alpinist uh, woman, and um, so he's talking about her and about her attitude and how uh, self-confident she is and that uh, how the way she laughs at him and uh, because he doesn't really understand her passion to climb mountains and to risk her life and etc etc uh, so yeah so I changed the words pretty fast but it was uh, as if it uh, if uh, like a man would sing it to uh, dedicate it to chess player female chess player but since the singer was you i decided to change the words uh, a little bit so it's like a woman to a woman tribute and that's uh, that's how uh, that's what we have and actually you prepared like a lot of diagrams and a lot of combinations for this song right can you tell us more about it yes i Actually, I prepared many, 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 many more, more diagrams. I prepared like of 150 women champions of different countries of the world, GMs, women grandmaster, women field master, women international master from many, many, many different countries and latitudes. And uh, for this first stage of chess divas, I couldn't put them all in as I wanted properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, um, many of the combinations that I investigated and I had help also from uh, Bradley Law and um, Olympio Uran also, and uh, my friend Ruben Felgaer also I researched. We, we made a, a very big research to try to include as many chess players as possible. But in this first uh, stage of chess divas, I decided only to include in this song that is about the chess player girl, the, Shahmatiska, mm -hmm. the 18, no, the 17 women that have been world champions. Okay. I didn't include, of course, uh, Judith Polgar because she never actually won the the women or world chess, chess championship because she never participated in that uh, in that uh, tournament. So I made uh, another song uh, dedicated to her beautiful games. Uh, but I included one player that was never uh, actually a world chess women champion. That is Hampi Koneru because I realized that she never was a, a world chess champion and I actually thought that she was because but she, she just a, uh, well last year she won a rapid women's world chess championship yes, I know I know no close. I know but the, the, the criteria was to, just to include the ones that that got that because it's very difficult to choose you know to, to choose among the chess players so I decided okay I will only include the the women chess world chess champions but I will include a uh, Hampi Koneru because uh, she has been one of the top chess players and she I, I feel that she also is representing in this song all the amazing women chess players from India actually okay so uh so yes those are the the combinations that we will see in the video of uh, Shahmat Yes, and actually I'm showing uh, the first one, I believe, which is Vera Menchik against Sonia Graf Stevenson. Uh, actually, I prepared well, an image from Wikipedia just to show to our spectators on the Women's World Chess Champions. 
uh, with the years and with the names uh, i think it's good to include in this stream yes. and yes. Uh, as you can see um the first one is vera menchik who actually um died during a bomb attack uh, in london uh, during the second world war in 1984 and uh, she was uh, i mean the reigning uh, she had been the reigning world champion at the time the attack happened so she died like uh, being a world champion and uh, then after the uh, second world war um, a special tournament was organized which was won by Ludmila Rudenka so she uh, became the second uh, women's world chess champion and then there was a long long uh, decade of the um, champions from the Soviet Union uh, Elizaveta Bykova, a third uh, women's world chess champion, Olga Rubtsova, uh, and then uh, the Georgian uh, players uh, came to the scene, uh, starting with Nona Gaprindashvili uh, and uh, Maya Chiburdanitsa. Uh, so uh, this. I want to say two things. Mm -hmm. yes. One second that I, I will interrupt. One, one moment. Yes. I just want to say something about this. Mm -hmm. um, Alexandra, sorry that I interrupt. No, no, because, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Yes. People are asking mm -hmm. where they can listen to this song again. And the, the thing is that it's only today for you guys because this will be only uh, released like in one more month. So the only ones that have ever listened to this is you just now. Because so I, I'm begged very Huga, I begged her so much <laughs> to let us listen to the songs because she was saying that they're not ready, they're still in production. Oh. And But um, then, yeah, she agreed to let us listen to this uh, raw versions of uh, the songs. Uh, oh. And yeah, I'm very, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very grateful to Huga for that. Yeah, uh, I'm very happy too about it. And it's the raw version as, as well, Alexander said well. That it's the raw version, it has no mix, it's not the final, okay, it's only piano and voice, it will be like that because it's a live uh, session that I did, the Chess Divas concept is, at, until now, is uh, just piano and voice, so it's this very intimate, uh, you know, performatic, so to say, way of uh, music, style of music, but uh, it's also very intense and very personal, I feel, that it's different that when you have a whole band, it's just piano and voice, it's very expressive, so I like it very much like this. And yes, you are the only ones that have listened to it in the world. Good. We're happy. We're <laughs> happy. Okay. So, so, and getting back to the Women's World Chess Champions after the Soviet uh, like hegemony of um, all those wonderful uh, female chess players, um, Si Jun came uh, to the scene uh, and she won the championship. But then Susan Polgar. Uh, won a world championship match and we know that she wasn't able to defend it when Sejun won it without I believe a world champ because um, uh, Susan was on a maternity leave and somehow they didn't find a good date to play a world championship match so Sejun uh, became again the world champion uh, and then from, starting from 2001 um, we had this uh, moment of the knockout uh, championships so uh, the tournaments the tournament that is called nowadays world cup uh, was called uh, world championship and uh, all those uh, champions from 2001 to 2016 was a world champions who won uh, these world cups well i mean formats right antonetta stefanova xiu yuhua yours truly alexandra kostinyuk hui fang anna ushenina then hui fang again and actually uh, when i say hui fang again uh that's not really true because hui fang won in 2010 uh, then she wasn't uh, during. I mean, uh, in this uh, tournament, a World uh, Cup uh, style tournament. Uh, then she wasn't able to defend her title in the next World Cup tournament. But she won the series of Grand Prix and uh, won uh, her title in the match against Hampi Konaru 
in 2013 they played a world championship match because the system started to change and co uh, i mean we had different system uh, every uh, two years but then maria muzichuk she won again a knockout um, uh, title and after that they played with Hui Fan, Maria Muzichuk and Hui Fan another match for the world championship title uh, which Hui Fan won but since we had one year of the world championship match and another year uh, as a knockout event it was kind of complicated and uh, Hui Fan didn't play again the knockout Tan Zhangui won this knockout in Tehran uh, which I also played and uh, then she lost uh, world championship match to Juvin Jun, uh, which uh, she is currently the world champion. She already defended her title, as we know, at the beginning of this year against Alexandra Garyachkina, my compatriot, who was very, very close to winning the title, uh, but lost on tiebreak. So it's a quite, uh, it's not that long, I mean, the history of women's world chess champions, but uh, we have some names and uh, we have a lot of changes <laughs> in between matches, tournaments, different formats, uh, but um, uh, so we've, we've, we've tried it all, we can say, and uh, of course it's wonderful, it's wonderful that you decided to create um, a special song dedicated to all the women's world chess champions and chose uh, combinations from uh, uh, games of every single uh, one of them, and we can um, quickly... Um, discuss this uh, combinations uh, one by one because i'm try to upload the games um and, yes and the this game mm -hmm. is a very magic against sonia graf mm -hmm. i will make a i will just tell you that in the next stage of uh, of chess divas the ne the the next uh group of songs that will follow there will be a tribute especially to sonia graf because she's a very inspired woman. Mm -hmm. She never was a world chess champion, but the, her story is just fascinating. We won't speak about it now because we will make a stream afterwards when we do the, the tribute to her, but uh, research about her, look her up. Uh, she's a, a really, really interesting woman. And she even wrote uh, amazing books when she was living in Argentina. Okay. So, uh, sounds yeah. great <laughs> sounds great and yeah that's um in this particular game uh very magic won by a very nice um a move she played uh rook to d7 and then that's uh she's well this was uh, in the 1930s right uh the game was played let me check when it was played because I don't see it here. I'll check when it was played. It was played in 1937. Uh, and so she's sacrificing the rook in order to deflect the queen, to move it away and make her combination another by the way another queen sacrifice queen takes h5 possible it's like third third queen sacrifice in a row by very menchik that we're we're uh looking at <laughs> yes uh, what a coincidence and why did uh, queen takes h5 didn't work immediately because of queen takes h2 i believe uh, so that's why rook to d7 first deflecting the queen moving it away from this h2 square and then queen takes h5 very beautiful queen sacrifice and those wonderfully placed uh bishops um just cutting cutting out the board i mean this poor poor black king it cannot survive this two strong bishops after g takes h5 bishop h7 checkmate follows and in case of bishop takes g5 queen h8 will follow with the checkmate so another nice very nice combination very nice attack by uh the first women's world chess champion vera menchik and we go to the uh, to the next combination uh, to the uh, second women's world chess champion, Lyudmila Rudenka. And also a fascinating story, a fascinating woman. She helped a lot of people 
during the war and um, she she's also a, a very inspiring woman i think uh, maybe a a, a, a <laughs> A song will, about her will come in Chess Divas, who knows? <laughs> hopefully. hopefully, yes. So, uh, in this uh, position, well, we can see that she managed to outplay her opponent somewhere uh, in the opening, or um, for some reason, I don't know why, but her opponent left her king uh, alone, and we see that this pawn on a5 is kind of cutting uh, out the board in two parts and um, is not letting uh, black uh, knight to go back to protect mm -hmm. her um, queen king and she sacrificed the bishop bishop takes h6 in order to open up the position of the king in order to get closer to it into h7 square knight of eight followed tried to protect the square on h7 but here uh, ludmila made another very strong move rook e3 bringing rook out three. yes bringing out her rook to the attack actually um, i was recording uh, recording a video course um, yesterday um, and there was one rule mentioned i've never really heard about this rule but the author of this course uh, course simon williams uh, the course on king's gambit he uh, he said that um, there is like a rule of a thumb that if you are attacking the king of the opponent's king it's good to have at least three pieces in the attack so two often is not enough but three uh, are good a very good <laughs> very good starting point and um, B uh, rook e3 is definitely bringing another piece to the attack rook to g3 and then h4 getting a uh, winning position and uh, i think ludmila uh, won uh, ludmila vladimirovna won this game um, soon okay let's get to the next um, women's world champion example elizaveta bykova uh, well that's a very long game but probably you liked uh, the traps that she set uh, for for her opponent's uh, queen she played here knight to b5 and trapping opponent's queen and won it it was a long 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 fight afterwards and actually her opponent even managed to save the game the game ended in a draw 90 moves <laughs> quite a long game but of course this uh queen's trap is a nice trap very nice okay and then uh, then the game between uh between uh, Ludmila Rudenka and Olga Rubtsova. So the fourth women's yeah. world champion is Olga Rubtsova. She was playing with black. And, and she, she won. Yeah, yes, Rubtsova. she won this game. Uh, and the last move of the game is rook to d3. Again, another trap for the queen. Suddenly, in the very central square, the queen is trapped. There is no way to go. All the squares where the queen can go is under control by black pieces and uh thus thus yeah it's lost and the game is lost as well okay let's carry on uh-huh now we we're uh, getting to the uh georgian women to the greatest well, uh, yes nona gabrindashvili and maya tiburdanitse they cover like i don't know three decades alone <laughs> they're amazing very yes famous um players actually nowadays since chess uh, used to be so popular in the soviet union if you ask like middle-aged people about chess what do they think what chess players they can name it will be karpov kasparov and it will be gaprinashvili and chiburdanitsa i think <laughs> still uh, one uh, i mean still uh, some of the most famous chess players in russia <laughs> if you make this uh, like poll of the most uh, influenced chess players in even today, I'm sure uh, their names will be um, 
uh, will be mentioned by people quite often if you ask uh, play, uh, people in the streets uh, please name like famous chess players they will say Karpov Kasparov and Gavrindashvili Chiburdanidze so so yeah definitely such an impact on um, in the chess history and uh, I yeah this uh, this you example... know when we mm -hmm. when we met uh, alexandra at the grand prix in monte carlo on november uh, 2019 it was that nice... you were playing there yes that you it won. was a very and nice grand prix yes. i was watching there and the, uh, you remember that the uh, nonaga pindashvili and maya tsumurvanitsa were playing against each other like after i don't know right I'm, yes it's like 30 years or something I have pictures with them and I was talking to Maya Tiwur and it was so amazing. But to see them like playing against each other after so many years, it was so, so inspiring and so beautiful. Yes, that was so, actually true. They met in the during a rapid women's a European right women's world chess uh, championship or blitz I don't really remember rapid or blitz, but they met there in Monaco for the first time since their um, world championship match and this position i like it very much i like this example very much because it reminds me of this evergreen uh, like anderson kiziritsky game uh yeah. similar uh, rook sacrifice two rook sacrifice similar motives and queen to d4 amazing move just amazing move yeah. the rook is uh, under attack and it can be taken with a check but who cares right who cares about rooks if you can checkmate your book <laughs> yeah and here here comes like the point of the combination here comes another like fantastic move uh, with the queen definitely not that Gaprindashvili uh, was a queen that uh, knew how to use chess queens <laughs> as well uh, very beautiful quiet move despite the fact that black white just sacrificed two rooks two rooks her king is on d2 and it seems like it's exposed to a million of checks but no just relax and play chess keep calm and play chess queen to f6 just very nice very nice move blockading the f pawn and creating a threat of bishop h6 and for some reason even though it's one more move for black to make before white creates this deadly checkmating threat there is no way i mean there is no way they can uh defend from. Yeah. That, yeah isn't it amazing very nice very combination i like it i like it with quiet moves so first sacrificing two rooks and then a little quiet move improving the position to the maximum and then well yes queen takes b2 is possible that true but then well the queen will just take the queen and uh white uh, will have a huge material advantage the rook is still under attack on f8 so if the rook goes to e8 after that uh bishop h6 is still possible bishop h6 we remember about this queen f6 bishop h6 idea and bishop takes f8 so white is winning here very nice combination but non terentivna and we go we um we keep we keep going to the next uh, women's world chess champion and her one of her combinations maya chibudanidze i love to know the name I, I love that you know the names, not only the last name, but the you just said the Nona no, what? Nona Yeah, because <laughs> no, because in Russian, in Russian, it's like a, a polite way uh, to address to people is uh, not only by um, one like our name, but also the patronymal name of our father. Which uh, me, I am Alexandra Konstantinovna because my father is Konstantin. So everyone I mean, has a father and uh, get this uh, name that is widely used and it's like considered to be a polite way to uh, address. Although nowadays uh, um, usually people don't use it uh, as often as it used to be, like it used to be almost obligatory. And for me, it was a nightmare because I kept forgetting <laughs> those those names i just remembered the first name of the person especially for teachers i remember in school uh, that was an nightmare. The, the first lesson they introduced themselves like uh yeah maria ivanovna and i 
I, I remember only the first name Maria and Ivanovna I simply f forget immediately and then like it's a huge nightmare during my school years but nevertheless uh, non-interventive somehow it's e uh, easy to remember uh, and we uh, uh, yes I, I know that only the uh, Boris Spassky is Boris Vasilevich mm -hmm. yes <laughs> And uh, for Maya Chiburdanidze is Maya Grigorievna, and we are looking at her at her combination. Uh, she sacrificed an exchange here. Now Rook takes b6 uh, for this very special c4 square that the knight was protecting. And after a takes b6, she went bishop c4, attacking the f7 mm -hmm. square, creating a checkmating threat. And after bishop e6, she sacrificed one more exchange. So double exchange sacrifice in order to get closer to this magical, magical f7 square that is often very important in chess since it's the closest one to the black's king. A queen to f4, again creating a checkmating threat. And after queen d7, very nice final tactical blow, bishop to b5. And it turns out that the queen has nowhere to go to protect this f7 square. And uh, Chiburdanidze's opponent, uh, Vladimir Malanyuk, just resigned here because after queen takes b5, queen f7 will follow. Okay. Beautiful. You know, after uh, singing these uh, this Russian songs, I really feel like learning a little bit Russian. Actually, today I, I would like to... today I saw a post in Instagram by Hari Kadranawali, an Indian chess player, mm -hmm. and uh, it turns out that she mm, is learning Russian, and she was learning Russian during all those uh, uh, months uh, with no tournaments, and well, it was a very nice, uh, a nice post. Uh, I liked it very much. That's so cool. That's mm -hmm. so cool. I never thought I would learn Russian, but it's really a beautiful language, and the, for chess, it's like a it's like a native language of chess, right? So it used it to be definitely. It used to be, and we know that Bobby Fischer learned Russian uh, in order to be able to read uh, books in Russian because yes. at that no. time, at that time, most of the books uh, were in Russian. And uh, yes, and that uh, that's the position of yes. our next yes. world champion, Sijun. And as our as our viewers already noticed, very nice geometrical combination: uh, Queen H8 and then Queen G7, sacrificing the Queen in order to win back Black's Queen and the Knight that was taken by the White Queen on this move that's how the game ended yeah. uh, also very nice uh, tactical combination based on this uh, fork motif uh, yeah. then then another fork actually combination uh, well the main motif is fork uh, by Susan Polgar against Vasily Smyslov actually Vasily Vasilievich Smyslov um, um he would turn 100 years in march 2021 so there is already oh. a big of photo um, um dedication to him in the central chess club in uh, moscow we played the russian super final just recently and there was already a big like display with all this his photos and actually i i like the games of this uh, world champion very much and um, well, probably <laughs> it's a it's a topic for another another stream since our stream is dedicated to female chess player. But because our stream is not only about chess but also about music, uh, Vasily Vasilievich was definitely a very special person. Um, not uh, only a very strong chess player but also. Uh, a very strong uh, singer, op opera singer. Opera, opera uh, yes. singer, yes, yes, I know. And um, he, I know, and also, you know, in my in my music video, mm -hmm. isolated phone, mm -hmm. it's inspired mm -hmm. on a beautiful chess game by uh, 
Vasily Smyslov uh, against Anatoly Karpov in 1971, in which the isolated point of uh, Smyslov uh, well, is blocked by a black knight and everything, but it, it uh, manages to get out of the blockade and advance and advance and move forward and go through the fire and become a queen and promote and it's uh, it's very beautiful the chess sequence that uh, is shown at, at the last part of the video i invite you to watch isolated phone on my youtube channel uh, this song is very inspiring and it shows smith's love represented with against carpo so uh, i feel i think that you will enjoy it okay good i'm trying to uh-huh I, I found the link so i'm gonna share it in the chat with our spectators one second i will be back in one second yes yes and while uh, while huga um left for a few seconds i'm gonna show you the combination a very nice combination by uh, susan polgar which is also um based on a fork motif and actually vasily smyslov was the one who said that um chess tactics there are like three main elements in chess tactics uh, a pin, no, a fork, a pin, and a check. So here we have almost everything except the pin. We have, well, that's a sacrifice in order to give a check, and then one more check, and a fork. A fork, and after this, it's like an exchanging combination, in fact. But the fact that uh, white has two extra pawns um, let them have a winning position, winning endgame after this combination. Yes, okay, so that was a combination by Susan Polder against Vasily Smyslov, and now comes. Now it's the time to show her brilliancy. Um, Antonetta Stefanova, a very strong player from Bulgaria, a former world chess champion. Uh, Rook G7 she played, and after Queen H5, a very nice move. Very nice move to like the most uh, protected square, it seems, on the board. But nevertheless, Rook's, Rook to G8, those moves under 2, 3 or 4 attacks, they always... Uh, Impress me very much because it seems that it's so protected, but no, no. Yes, if a black takes with the a king, then queen g3, queen g7 will follow. In case of rook takes g8, queen f6 was also a very fast checkmate. Another very nice checkmating combination. And here is uh, the combination by a Chinese uh, player and women's world former women's world chess champion xu hua she won this championship in 2006 in ekaterinburg um rook takes to d7 and the idea main idea is that after queen takes g7 bishop takes g g7 will follow with a with a fork after bishop takes g7 knight f6 thanks to the pin we have a check and a fork good good beautiful combination in the game uh, Anno Shenina played king h8 but then just rook takes f7 and uh was just a very well i believe just uh, a checkmate oh, let me show you this beautiful checkmate in case black takes on f6 okay then we see the game of Humpy, Humpy Conero. Ah, that's a game from the uh, Skolkova Grand Prix, right? It was placed recently and I was present in the playing hall at that time. Uh, was it Skolkova? Um, I believe so. I believe it was Skolkova. Okay, knight e to g5. A very nice move. Sacrificing the knight, but getting closer to the opponent's king. The idea is that after h takes g5, knight takes g5, g6, knight takes f7. Another knight sacrifice will follow, completely destroying black's uh, king um, safety barrier. And, uh, well, queen takes f7 is not possible. And after king takes f7, rook e6 will follow with uh, too many deadly 
threats so uh, in the game black played bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 but then queen h7 king f8 rook e6 and black just resigned because after f takes e6 knight takes e6 will come and the queen will be lost a very nice combination by humpy conero and, very nice uh, well that's not really uh my nicest combination but the only win that i have against <laughs> magnus carlson so that's probably why huga decided to use it <laughs> oh why not there were so many brilliant combinations by you alexandra i was like okay but which one i chose i choose i don't know but i said you know what i will choose the one that she beat magnus carlson why not why okay. not? Okay, and we have this, <laughs> and we have this keywords in the video to, that we can we can use Magnus Carlson, right? <laughs> that's yeah, that's totally, good. Totally. All right, yeah. And well. I want to I want to say something that uh, some mm -hmm. somebody from Chile uh, mm -hmm. told me that uh, in some of the Chess Divas tribute I should uh, talk about or tribute also Berna Carrasco. That was a very very important chess player from our country in Chile in the 1930s and 40s mm -hmm. and uh, yes i she will be included i have already a, a game selected from her and from many other chess players from latin america that i will i will tribute also in this uh, in this series of musical tribute to women chess players legendary from all over the world so good. thank you for your your kind words sounds is a very good plan yes looking mm -hmm. forward to listen to as many songs dedicated to female chess players as possible yeah and well about my game against magnus i think you can watch this youtube video uh where i analyze it move by move with slow motion on on the final touch piece um, touch piece rule that we discussed during this game and uh well yeah i got lucky a little bit but i have i have this win against magnus in my career <laughs> which makes me quite happy okay and uh who you find who you finds game now it's her turn rook g2 e1 the queen cannot be taken on c4 because of rook e8 checkmate and after queen takes e1 she didn't take the queen but the knight yes that happens in the game of chess that sometimes material oops uh something happened to my camera because i touched it but i will get get it back as long as you can hear me that's already not bad technical <laughs> technical problems they come and go i will activate it come on yes i'm here i'm back okay and um yes checkmate checkmate on g7 there is no way again to protect the king and as i was saying material in chess is not everything sometimes the king's safety is what we care about the most um yes. because in order to win a game we need to checkmate the opponent's king and sometimes we sacrifice a lot of material in order to get closer to the king that's how who you find won this game very nice brilliant uh attack what else we have anno shenina victory against uh, peter swidler yes here anna made a very nice move bishop to e2 a very um, unexpected move it's always unexpected to see a piece moving into a uh onto a square that is being attacked by another piece but a queen takes to e2 is not really working out very well because of this um double attack peter tried uh rook f7 but but lost this game in this very nice sequence of moves and interestingly enough <laughs> here queen d7 check white is not afraid of rook f7 with a check uh, because the queen can just grab the bishop 
yes a lot of checks i know and it's kind of some uh, at the first moment it seems as black is doing fine because uh they have uh, discovered uh, attack but no white has everything under control uh then a win against maria muzichuk um, versus a uh, humpy Conero. i wasn't sure which uh, exactly which position because i didn't find it in your file but since it was noticed uh, uh, the 2000 uh, this game is from 2015 i picked this position probably it's not the one that you picked <laughs> in your uh, um, um, tribute uh, in in the video but uh, nevertheless it's a very nice uh, final touch uh, of the game by maria muzichuk which is queen to f7 i like this move very much and the idea is that if black takes on f7 rook e8 will follow with a checkmate mm -hmm. uh tan gui against uh, emil sutovsky tan gui won after playing here knight to b4 with, a, with an idea to play uh rook to d1 in if if uh, white takes the knight in the game knight c6 followed but it didn't help black no, it didn't help white because black managed not only win white's knight but also to dangerously located white pawns and the game and what else do we have we have the game between juve and june a very nice attack against the russian grandmaster boris savchenko she played wow we're reaching we're reaching the end of the combination yes of... can you believe it can you believe yeah, it i cannot <laughs> believe so many your machine alexandra is amazing we getting but now yes we will see this one and then we will listen to the song. yes yeah we, we, we're getting are you ready, guys? Are you ready? so just a final touch by juve june her very nice attack and then the song is coming so get ready get ready night to be three like a Trojan horse, Knight is trying to offer himself uh, because if uh, White takes, uh, the A file will open and Black's pieces will checkmate uh, White's king. But, uh, well, White didn't take the Knight, but after Knight f7, Black just grabbed the Rook on c1 and won the game quite convincingly after a few more moves that's how the game ended uh, here we go i think i showed all the uh positions that you are showing during the video on this song shahmatistka right yes is that true yes that's all the positions that i show during the okay so we'll show once again this di diagrams and positions we just discussed and this song shakhmatistka which is a female uh, version of i mean in russian similar to french we have uh, the word chess player both in like in masculine and a feminine uh, way of saying like uh, in french we can say joueur de chèque and we can say joueuse de chèque uh, in English, mm -hmm. there is no difference between chess player, female or male. Uh, but in Russian, we do have this difference. And that's uh, why the song is called Shachmatistka. And we're going to listen to it now. Yes. Yes. Da -da. I just want to say that I'm very happy that uh, there are so many people watching this live 4,487. This is amazing. I would love to know where are you from, guys. Uh, I send you my love. I am from. Uh, I am here live from Santiago de Chile. I just returned from Budapest to to spend the Christmas and the holidays with my family and my friends. And here it's very hot because we're in the southern hemisphere in Latin America, very south of the world. So it's very very hot the weather. And uh, Alexandra, if I understand properly, she's in Paris yes i'm in paris right now so this is a very international stream and we're singing songs in russian and hungarian so this is a very special stream for you 
guys. Yes, uh, yes, and let friends, us know. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I love holiday. those. I love those geographical uh, where you from uh, during the streams, especially when so many people are watching. So let us know while the song is singing. Uh, well, it's going on. Let us know where you from, where you watching our stream from. And uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to let it go. <laughs> Uh, so I'm nervous. Yes. I'm nervous that you will listen to this song. It was so hard for me to record it properly, so I'm very, very nervous. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I am uh, switching it on. Well, trying to, trying to, so you can hear it, and we can then discuss um, your and share. You can share your impressions. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Спросила тебя, зачем играешь ты, зачем ползешь наверх, зачем ты рвешься в бой, ведь Олимпий самолета видно здорово, размеялась ты и взяла с собой, и с тех пор ты стала другом и тренером, шахматистка моя, Олимпийка моя. Первый раз, когда мне детским отставили, улыбалась ты, шахматистка моя. А потом, когда все эти комбинации не могла я решить. Ночами мучилась, обзывала меня ты бестоланою, но терпела я, приговаривая, о какая же ты стала суровая, шахматистка моя, олимпийка моя, каждый раз, когда в фигуре проигрывала, ты бронила меня, но не совалась я. Okay, here we go. That was the second song by Huga, uh, adapted by Alexandra Kostinyuk, the lyrics. Um, I hope you liked it. Well, to translate it, it's gonna be a long... Oops. We have a donation from Life Master Artun Braden. 
thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much arthur um thank you. it was uh well it's a long song but it's more like um dialogue right it's a dialogue to a lady who uh once uh found out about um this interesting chess world um she probably had a friend chess player and she asked her why are you playing all the time why are you going there why are you fighting what is this all about and this chess player she laughed at her and um then decided to explain it to her explaining the rules explaining the the essence of uh, the chess game and um, she managed so the singer becomes very fas uh, uh, passionate about the chess game herself and uh, this chess player she um, she's her trainer now and she, well that's a story yes that's a dialogue uh, well a monologue actually about uh, of this uh, singer uh, of the who is trying to become a chess player now and um, yeah about 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 chess women chess players it's very beautiful because um the lyrics say your story the, the story that you that you created for these lyrics it's very beautiful because uh, this woman is asking the other why are you always reaching for the top why are you always struggling to to achieve more the olympus can be seen perfectly from an airplane it's not necessary that you that you go all all the way up you know and then the chess player tries to to explain to her to transmit her her passion for chess and then she understands and then she starts uh, studying and she talks to this chess player as a very tender and loving uh, teacher but also as a very strict and uh, uh, disciplined um, chess player that makes her go through all her uh, openings one one many times you know and correct all the mistakes and be very uh, rigorous like uh, really a, a top chess player should be and then at some point at the end of the song she's happy because she can also uh, be a champion like her and and enjoy the the beauty of chess and the the really uh, excellent part of chess together with her so yeah, they are she both manages to win they, to, they become... she manages to taste this uh, to 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 get to victory and to taste uh, this victory and then she yeah the final the final like sentence of the songs that now we're united with uh, one victory and uh, i have also become a chess player says the singer <laughs> yes very beautiful thank you alexandra Spasiva. Uh, Spasiva. <laughs> thank you to huga for singing the songs in russian and for uh being ready to learn them in russian and to try to uh sing them in russian that's uh, amazing um i have no idea how is it possible without knowing a language just to learn a song by listening to somebody's somebody's strange um um whatsapp messages <laughs> but you did it and um yes and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing the video story uh, as well for the songs it was uh, it was a big challenge but it was a, a honor to, to make a collaboration, a creative collaboration with you. And I was very inspired by the beautiful lyrics and the love that you put to it and the, the way that they flow, you know, from you. And that's uh, very beautiful for me because I am a chess fan. My heart, you know, is a chess fan. Now I'm, I, I'm uh, you know, working in the chess world, but very, some, since a very early age, I've been a chess fan, I'm a musician, I'm a composer that is in love with chess. And to be able to create something artistically together with one of my chess idols is like something that, something very beautiful for me. So any challenge is, is nothing, you know, it's a, 
it's worth it. Do you play chess yourself? Have yes, you... I do. I, I, I play myself. Uh, I play classical tournaments. Well, this year I haven't been playing much uh, classical games, only Blitz and Rapid. I play a lot on chess.com and I play uh, tournaments on Lee Chess. My, my elo in chess.com is around 1,800, 1,900 sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my feeder rating is 1,300. But I play more than that. I know all chess players say that. You feel the game. I am really underrated. You're grandmaster at heart, yes. And rating it doesn't really reflect your real power, right? Okay, good. But that's good. That yes, I have to play. That means that you know the game, you know how it's sometimes it's painful, right? And how uh, it's uh, entertaining and, uh, well, you, you know the emotions. And that's why probably your songs are so touching sometimes, because you know what you're singing about. I suffer. I suffer when I lose. <laughs> Everyone does. Everyone does. That's normal. So um, let's get going then to the next songs. To the song uh, number three. It's a um, tribute to the Polgar sisters, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This song is called, uh, the original song is mm -hmm. called Hain Roja Volnik. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very beautiful song. Hungarian song from the late 80s. And um, it's a song that says, if I was a rose, I would not bloom once a year. I would bloom four times a year. I would bloom for the little girl, for the little boy, for real love and for passing away. If I was a door, I would always be open. I would let everybody come through. Then if I was a window, I would show everything to everybody so it's a very inclusive song a very beautiful uh, feeling you know the, the song what it represents and it's a very famous popular song in, in hungary and i fell in love with this song last year and i learned it i cannot speak hungarian you know it's very very difficult language it's, uh, I, i'm actually very good with languages i can speak french i can speak a little bit and understand a lot of german I can uh, understand all Italian and Portuguese. You know, I, I like languages very much, but Hungarian is even most uh, challenging than Russian, really. Like, it's just, I don't know where to cling to. It's just, it's just, uh, it's impossible. <laughs> it's just impossible. But I decided to learn this song because I, I will, I'm living there, you know, in Budapest, and I really wanted to be able to, to have a song, you know, a song for me is like a, it's like a home, you know, it's like a, a common space with other people that you can share, that you can inhabit. A song is a space in, in, in the air, so to say, in the hearts of people. And that's why I wanted to learn this song. And then when I started doing the Chess Divas project, I realized that I wanted to make this song for the tribute to the Polgar sisters that I wanted to make. But the lyrics are so perfect you know so poetical uh the meaning that they are very deep and very specific so i didn't feel the confidence to be able to change them all so i kept most of the lyrics the same but the last stanza mm -hmm. of the song i wrote myself the, the lyrics in english and i asked two friends in budapest that they could help me rebecca um they, they uh, Ramona and Rebecca, they helped me to translate uh, the, the lyrics from English to make them uh, fit with the melody and the Hungarian song. And uh, we made the last stanza in Hungarian. So uh, this song, uh, the last part says, if I was a game, I, was, I would be giving a chance to everyone. Doesn't matter their origin, doesn't matter where they come from. Chess, chess will be there for us. Chess, chess will connect us. Mm. Chess, no, chess, chess will unite us. That, okay. That's what the last part of the song says. Good. 
Good. So you um, changed only a little part of this uh, song, right? In Hungarian. Yes, I thought that the tribute would be better like that because the song already is so expressive in their, its own words that it uh, already fitted the spirit of the tribute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, well, I have... Um, you sent a few combinations, right? That you are showing of the Polgar system, the sisters during this uh, song. One is uh, yes. from Susan Polgar's game against Lajos Portis. Uh, she managed to win by uh, playing very energetically uh, against opponent's king again. We're all about. Sportic was also a, a very important, uh, legendary Hungarian player, mm -hmm. and he, he was also a, a, he's also a very musical person. Mm -hmm. I think he recorded some songs. Hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, so she played in this game, in that game she played um, Rook to um, D2, despite the fact that uh, it seems as, uh, the White Knight is attacking this square, but since uh, White Knight is the only defender of uh, Black's, uh, White's uh, king, it's difficult for White. Uh, after this move, since knight takes the two, does not work because of this checkmate that's coming soon. Uh, Lajos Portis played uh, rook a8, but then two knights just simply destroyed black's king position. And then a very nice final queen sacrifice again. We, we're all about queen sacrifices today. Knight to f3. Uh, I, selected, I selected with certain criteria. <laughs> yes. Live Portish resigned because of this beautiful checkmate that will follow soon. That's a combination of Susan Polgar. Uh, you also prepared a combination by Judith Polgar. Her bri brilliant game against Alexei Shirov. It's a very nice queen takes g5. Uh, move. Well, the idea is after queen takes g5, we see another fork. And after knight a5, Judith played another very beautiful move, knight to e3. And now, if white takes on g5, knight f3 will follow. We call this kind of uh, checkmates when two knights are participating, well, in Russian at least, an Arabic checkmate because of the knights taking part. Uh, in this uh, combination, uh, but Alexei played uh, queen g3, but then after queen takes g3, knight takes c2 with a fork, let Judith win material and later on the game. And then the third combination by the third, Polgar um, sister uh, Sofia, uh, also very nice queen sacrifice. Surprise, surprise, queen takes h6. Surprise, surprise. Yes, queen takes h6. Opening up the h file with a check, then rook h7, g takes. I brought, I brought to the chess queen, I brought only queen sacrifices. Yeah, nice. I, I like queen sacrifices, yes. <laughs> and then uh, black resigned because after rook takes f7, rook c8. Very nice. Yes, rook c8 will follow and then winning the black queen and the game so that's the three combinations that you used in this uh song um, hungarian song dedicated to the polgar sis sisters and mm -hmm. he, you sent me another uh song a tango right you sent me a tango yes we will not we will not listen to the hungarian song today mm -hmm. we will say that surprise okay or very soon when the when the songs the chestivas videos and songs are released mm -hmm. as soon as possible we will work 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 during january to have them ready for you as, as soon as possible mm -hmm. uh with my wonderful team uh, production team in budapest uh that i'm very very glad that we made this possible during these crazy times the pandemia times we took all the precautions and they were very very supportive to make this happen so um, 
now we will go to the tangos, the three tangos that uh, that Judith Polgar, o sea, the, the three tangos are di three different games from Judith Polgar. One is the game that she lost against Kasparov mm -hmm. in 1996, in Dos Hermanas, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Dos Hermanas, 1996. Yes. And the... Uh, it's a very beautiful game that was a draw, but then turned out uh, that the jury didn't make the the, the accurate defensive uh, strategy well, maneuvers. Yes, the, Judith managed the, to get. With, uh, yeah, she didn't find the, the draw. Well, yeah, Judith, uh, he she was able to get to um, drawish end game, right? But didn't manage to do oh, to, to defend. Uh, in this end game, and at the end, lost this game. So it's a a little tragedy, yeah. right? Tango tragedy. It's a, it's a very tango tragedy. Mm -hmm. But then we have another tango that is a beautiful game that she uh, beat Vishwanathan Anand mm -hmm. also in Dos Hermanas, but in '99. Mm -hmm. And um, that one is a very funny tango because I sing it like if I was a uh, Vishy Anand, if I was, <laughs> if, I, if I was Anand okay. singing, like, what have you done to me? You're, you have me pinned everywhere. I can, I don't know what to move. I am, I'm lost. I, you know, it's like, it's a very desperate song from him to Judith. It's mm -hmm. very funny. Uh, the ones that uh, know Spanish will, will laugh a lot. And the <laughs> other ones with the subtitles, I hope that they will enjoy it too. And then the other tango is a song called Esta Noche de Luna. Mm -hmm. And that one tells the story of a very beautiful game between uh, Judith Polgar and Boris Pasky, in which uh, it's the match that they played in Budapest in 1993. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that game, uh, it was a draw, but uh, with that game, Judith uh, became a champion of the match. It okay, was the it was a crucial game so, of the uh, match. Mm -hmm. It was a crucial game, but it's be very beautiful because there are two pairs of knights, you know, the, well, there are some books, but still, or... I will but try the, to find it now, because I didn't find it in the files. It's like a dance, but... it's like dance of the knights, you know? Dan Golden Knights, yes. <laughs> well, let it's me see, Budapest, um, the... 93. Yes, I it's see, I see their match, uh, the but last... the final, the last game is won by Spassky. Probably the eighth game. Let me see. Was the tango? Oh, uh, well, maybe or maybe she already won the match, but they played one more game, something like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Let me. Ah, no, no, no. no. Wait, wait. She was playing with uh, with black. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. I, I checked only the. Uh... Okay, I'm trying to find her game. Well, Thank the... you for your kind comments uh, to all the people that are that I write in here in the chat on Twitch. I'm very happy to read you guys. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're enjoying these new songs, uh, new experiment, new chess musical experiment, featuring the one and only Alexandra Costini. So, <laughs> Thank you. Go. Thank you, Fuga. <laughs> uh, well, that's the tragedy on the board against um, Gary Kasparov that happened in Judith Polgar's game and uh, I I found another game, which is her win against Anand, with Vanatan yes. Anand, and uh, but I cannot find the game with Spassky, but I'm sure we will watch your videos and we'll be able to see uh, this uh, brilliant, the example of Judith Polgar's brilliancy on the board. And uh, the tango, should we listen to tango? Yes, we can listen. Uh, I sent you only one of the tangos, the one that she loses. Yeah, the against, tragic one. Uh, the tragic. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so good. So it's a, um, it's a very, it's a, it's a realistic, you know. So I, I chose a, song, um, a, a game that she won, another game that she made draw, and another game that she lost because that's chess, you know. Sometimes you win, sometimes you draw, sometimes you lose, but you keep playing, and sometimes you're your losses are even some sometimes you can be proud of them because uh, because it's uh, anyway you know you made uh, amazing moves you save the game in the middle the, okay then you lost but 
you shouldn't hate your losses, you know, as Capablanca used to say, we learn more from our defeats than from our victories. Many times after we lose a, a game, we will analyze it and analyze it and remember it for much longer than if we win it. So we will learn much more from it. Yeah, so. definitely. Sometimes we win, sometimes we learn, right? Yes. And okay, so I'm putting uh, now on this tango game dedicated to uh, Judith Polgar. And just a second, I will switch it on so uh, we can listen to this nice uh, song. So here we go. That was the third song that I was happy to present um, during yes. the stream. Some people are saying that the melody, the melody is similar to the to the to the tango that Al Pacino dances in the movie The Scent of a Woman, and exactly, it's the same the same song that uh, I adapted with my dear friend, uh, Grandmaster Ruben Felgae from Argentina. He was five times uh, champion from Argentina. And uh, we loved tango very much. So we had a lot of fun transforming the, the lyrics, telling the story about these uh, games from uh, Judith against Kasparov and uh, Vishwanathan Anand and Boris. So it was a very, very fun creative process, also. Wow, sounds amazing. Yes, it's from mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> and I'm uh, I'm sure we'll be delighted to see like the final video version of this song and um, um, be able to relieve all those combinations and uh, um, enjoy once again your work your musical work uh, because it's thank you alexandra for this space and this opportunity 
and yeah i'm very happy i thank you because um, uh, you decided to work on the song to create the songs to do this tribute to uh, women's chess players and um very grateful to you that you decided to share it uh, for the first time here on my channel and uh um of course i'm very happy well uh, i like uh, music a lot um i mean i like to sing but unfortunately i'm not a very good singer but uh, nevertheless i've been a uh, big fan of your work um, as I mentioned from uh, the Olympiad in Batumi so 2016 and I'm always looking forward to hearing uh, more of your songs so I wish all the best to you in the uh, coming new year mm. thank you so much a lot of uh, a lot of uh, wonderful uh, surprises and um new new creations that um hopefully will fulfill uh, your life in this in this coming year thank you so much alexandra i look forward to meet you again in a real life tournament and that we will sing duet these songs together hopefully hopefully <laughs> <Ochi> <laughs> <forward>. yes <laughs> I really look forward to that. I know that we will have a lot of fun singing these songs together. And I also want to say hello to my grandmother that she's watching this stream. She knows nothing about computers, but she was very excited about this because uh, uh, she knew about this event, about you. And uh, so I want to send a, a kiss to my grandma that is watching this because she transmitted me also the passion for tango and for music. <laughs> Thank you to her. A very big thing. And I also want I want to invite everybody that's uh, saying, for example, uh, somebody said uh, bacon, but he said Kramnik would love it. If you know uh, about my previous collaborations with uh, Chess Stars, I made uh, during this year a very uh, funny collaboration with Anish Kiri. We made a song by LP, the song Lost on You. We made it Lost to You. Mm -hmm. And I recorded it with a guitar. And uh, the song is about Hikaru Nakamura and the pop champs and the Twitch streamers, uh, you know, the, the gamers coming into chess. Mm -hmm. You can find it on my YouTube channel also. It's called uh, Lost to You. It's Huga featuring Anish Giri writing the lyrics. And also I made a collaboration with ex-world champion Vladimir Kramnik. We made a song this year and it's called End Games, Bloody End Games. And it's the story, he wrote himself the story on uh, some very ironical lyrics about his match uh, with uh, Gary Kasparov. So uh, you can also have a look at that video. It's on my YouTube channel too. I invite you to, to watch all the chess songs that I have there for you and to look, uh, be, uh, be alert for the next upcoming songs, Chess Divas. Yes, and right now you can uh, see the link to uh, Huga's uh, YouTube channel where you can find all those uh, videos she was talking about, except the chess divas. Chess divas are about to come. Yes. Chess divas only here in this stream. For <laughs> yes, for the moment, audio, audio versions of chess divas. Uh, three three uh, songs, uh, chess divas songs you heard today, tonight. And. Uh, definitely, definitely, I recommend you to go and um, subscribe to Huga um, Musica YouTube channel to listen to her previous songs and to be ready for the songs that are about to come. Yes, I send you a big kiss, Alexandra, and thank you so much to you and to all the people that join us today. I'm very, very grateful for this space and I'm very excited about showing you as soon as possible this new project and other of my own chess songs that are coming soon. Uh, one of them is called Open Files and I hope to release it very soon too. That's one of my original songs and that one is inspired by Adam Nimsovich. Okay, <laughs> sounds, sounds great. Well, thank you again and um all the best uh, happy holidays happy new year with happy our holidays. with my dear viewers i'll um, 
we'll see each other in the coming days uh, and uh, i'm looking forward to sing a song uh, with you alive one day so uh thank you again everyone for watching for listening for sharing your emotions uh take care play chess and listen to Huga music <laughs> bye Thank you, gracias. Buenas noches, Pacoña Noche. Bye bye. Chao.